Welcome to part 33 of Shark King's Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke. I'm sure you can already get what happened just looking at the overlay, but in the last episode, I took on that duo of psychic gym leaders in the Moth Deep Gym, and they freaking massacred my team. Harder than anything else in a single fight in this adventure. So, this was something I was never having to ex- if I would never expect to have to do wow, I'm, I'm so distraught by this I can't even speak, but I have to send off four Pokemon at once. So, as much as this is gonna absolutely hurt, I have to see these guys off one last time. Alakia, I didn't even get to have you on my team for one full episode. And that's really a shame because you're a Sharpedo, you're my friggin' namesake. I was really hoping I could really help you shine, but instead I just doomed you to an early death because I didn't train you anywhere near enough. And frankly, I made a mistake not saving you for later in the fight, instead of having Instead, having to deal with Earthquake, I still can't talk. Well, that's one way to mess up a funeral. But, this is it. See ya, Salakia. And then there was Miramax. I was really hoping to turn you into a Flygon. I kept you on my team all this time and occasionally gave you the experience there whenever I could, because I was really hoping to get you up to that level. But, obviously, I was too complacent for you to survive that long, and it's entirely my fault. I'm so sorry, Miramax. But this is goodbye. Maru. Mari Maru, my little ninja. I think I'm hurting about losing you more than anyone else. I mean, I've had you since, what, part two? And you've been really hard at work carrying me through pretty much this whole adventure, even taking out one of the most dangerous foes along the way. You were amazing despite your lack of offense. I mean, really, just 
What else can I even say? I'm... I'm gonna really miss having you around, Mato. At least you can be with Gex, right? That's not sensitive at all, but... Farewell, Mato. Oh, right. I have to get rid of those HM moves before I can do that. And Batman. Well, I at least got you up to your full power before you died. And you did ultimately save me in that last fight against Tate and Liza. You bravely stood up to, uh, stood up to them, despite being a poison type, and your confused ray really helped us survive. I'll never forget you for that, Batman. And I'm so sorry it cost you your life. Farewell. Well, since there's that bit of awkwardness with Madu, I need to take a Pokemon that can fly right away, so... Come with me, Kojiro. We need to make a flight to Lily Cove City, I guess. So, I'll meet you guys there. Alright, so this was a little bit of unexpected taxidermy I, I have to do on the thing I'm saddest about losing, but here I go. Yes, please. Wh what? Even the name writer can't get rid of- Ugh. STUPID! I have to teach that to someone else, don't I? <sighs> Well, since I absolutely need another water type anyway, I guess I have to add someone else to my party. Man, this... This release is just getting messier and more painful by the minute. This is just... Oh my god. Well, since I was gonna add you to my party anyway, get over here, Gloss. I'll get to you in a moment, but right now, you need to learn surf. Alright then, hopefully that awkwardness is finally done. And I can properly say farewell to Maru. She just does not want to go. I don't want to let go of her either, but... I don't have a choice. I really don't. Oh, Maru. Oh my god. Well... I was gonna fill in my team, and frankly, I was gonna take Kojiro and Gloss anyway because of Fly and Surf. But as for my other two team members, which I need to go into withdraw for that now, I would I should have just done move. But yeah, I've been doing a bit of saw, and considering how much water there is up ahead, and the fact that Creenon isn't the best for handling that because of his part rock typing. I need a grass type that actually resists water. And honestly, I think my best choice for that is Stigma. Because I can evolve her into Vileplume and she can do Sunny Beam stuff. I already taught Giga Drain to Creenon, so I can't give her that, but I think she can learn something else to sort of make up for that, even if she'll be pretty much completely sun dependent. But I think she could work out, so get over here, Stigma. And then for my last team member, well, I think I really should just take Poor Trooper back anyway. I mean, he's already trained up. He's got Shockwave to sort of deal with those water types. And I don't really have much else that I think will be all that pertinent to my adventure right now. So, might as well just take Poor Trooper back into the party after trying to retire him in the last episode. <laughs> well, this is all kind of awkward. But speaking of awkward, there is one little thing I need to take care of, and that's a matter involving Gloss. So while I'm headed over to Slateport City, I might as well explain. I gave him the name Gloss because I thought it was fitting for Spiel, mainly because I didn't think I would evolve him beyond Spiel. I thought I was going to have Mato on my team forever, so that really goes to show how complacent I got. But, yeah, because he's going to evolve, the name Gloss isn't going to be very fitting for anything other than a spherical little steel, so... I need to give him a more forward-thinking nickname, and thankfully I entered the right house, so... Yeah. Thing is, the rules say my Pokémon have to be nicknamed, but they say nothing about changing the nickname. 
And while I usually don't want to do this, because I feel like that's kind of immersion breaking for a Nuzlocke, I feel like this one is actually quite necessary. So as fun as it was to call you Gloss, I think I need to give you something more fitting. Like Frostbite, for example. This name will make a bit more sense once you reach your final form, okay, Frostbite? There we go. So, one more little thing I need to take care of. I was just mentioning Sunny Beam, but I don't have either of those TMs, Sunny Day or Solar Beam. So I need to take care of those right now, and thankfully I got a spherical little ball of ice that can surf on the water. So that can take me to the Sunny Day TM. And I think the Solar Beam TM as well, but that's in the Safari though. Alright, this thing. Well, I'm pretty sure Karinon can take you on, because that's who I got up front. <laughs> All these unexpected interruptions. Alright, Kecleon. Stick your tongue out at me. I'll make you pay for that. Give it the secret power. Nice, that's enough for a two-shot. And it doesn't even get to move. You're awesome. Okay. So, pretty decent. Almost at level 41, because you've been at level 40 for how long, Creenon? Okay, I'll take that nest ball. And I want to surf over to this little thing across this little lake. Because everything is little, apparently. Didn't even feel like fighting that Meryl. I just want to go in here and get this TM from the Scorched Lab, the TM for Sunny Day. And you'd think I'd encounter something in here, but last I checked there were actually no possible encounters in the Scorched Lab, which is a shame because this is a location of its own. So I need to get back to the Safari Zone. Or wait, should I get, should I get, should I switch bikes first is what I was trying to say. Oh my god. You gotta love live commentary, right? <laughs> and all the mistakes that come with it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so... I've already been to the Acrobike area on the, in the Safari Zone. There are more live commentary mistakes. But, just to be safe, I want the mock bike t uh, the mock bike to get that TM. Because something tells me I need the mock bike to get Solar Beam. Maybe I'm mistaken. We'll find out. Alright, into the Safari Zone, even though I already caught a Pokemon here. My little Prima Donna, who isn't quite a Don fan yet, but whatever. And there I go again with that classic live commentary mistake over using the word whatever. <laughs> okay, so where is that Solar Beam TM? Pretty sure it's over this way. Something tells me it's definitely across water, so again, good thing I have frostbite now. <laughs> well, there's an item over here, and it is a max revive in a Nuzlocke. Money, I guess, even though I already have over 200,000 Poké Dollars. <laughs> well, almost 200,000. Did I say over? Yeah might be over, and yeah, there's a thing where I need to ride with the mock bike. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that the, the Solar Beam TM is over here. Yeah, I think it's actually across this lake. My memory might be coming back to me on that. That wasn't even a fight because Safari Zone. But there it is, the TM for Solar Beam! I'll see you guys in a little bit. Yeah. Are you gonna let me get out of here? Because I got what I need? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so one last little thing before the inevitable. On reflection, I should have taken care of this when I got the mock bike, but yeah. I came back to Marvel City because I have more than twice the money I need to get yet another Ice Beam TM. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna teach that to Frostbite, and he's gonna be the third Pokemon in this Nuzlocke to have learned the move. Because the first two both died on me. And both of those were kind of my fault. I mean... Okay, Jilly, I was never expecting to fight a Wobbuffet, so... I don't know if that one's entirely my fault, but... Madu, that was definitely on me. <sighs> All this grim reflection while I'm 
in a casino. Cause this is totally the place to reflect grimly on your life, right? <laughs> okay, so... Oh, so there is a psychic DM here. <laughs> well, since I have the money, I guess I could get that for Pork Trooper, since I'm apparently using him. But yeah, I want that Ice Beam TM. And you know what? I'll just speed up the coin getting for Psychic. And just like that, my almost 200,000 Poké Dollars was reduced to that. Yeah, this is why people hate casinos. <laughs> yes, Psychic TM, thank goodness. Okay, so I'll meet you at a center. I keep saying the last thing before the inevitable, but this is the real last thing. I need to take care of a little evolution so I can get it on screen before I begin the massive grind. Because I'm going to need to get these guys up to competent levels if I'm going to use them as a team. So, first off, let's evolve Frostbite. I can also evolve Stigma, but I think I'll wait a bit on that, like until after the grind. But yeah, there we go. Frostbite is evolving. Already. <laughs> I mean, I just caught you last episode. In fact, I didn't even look at your nature and stuff. Maybe I should after this. <laughs> Man, all kinds of awkwardness this episode, but... Hopefully that won't mar you as you evolve into... a Celio. And yeah, this is not quite the form where your name will make quite as much sense as I would like, but... you'll get there in like... 11 levels or something like that. <laughs> well, I guess this will be the first episode, and I would hope the only one that I have to record the base footage for in two parts. So, I'll see you guys when I'm done grinding for however many hours that'll take. Holy crap. Three hours. That's how long I spent grinding. And as a result, I got everyone except for Kreenon who was already overleveled up to level 39. I could have went with 40 to match Kreenon, but I thought it'd be funny if I went for 39 because the last time I did a grind that I had to not record because it would have taken too long, I got up to 29. So 29 to 39. I don't know. I like that. But before I look at them any further, there's one last little thing I need to do for Stigma, and there it is, the Leaf Stone. Because yeah, I wanted to raise her up, uh, raise him up, I forget what gender it is. Raise up my Gloom to learn Moonlight, and then evolve it into a Vile Bloom. That's what I wanted to go for. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. We have the Vile Bloom. One of my more favorite Pokemon. I mean, I like Oddish more than this, but Vileplume's pretty great. So yeah. Now that it's fully evolved, let's take a look at everyone, huh? First up, we got Frostbite, who I forgot to look at his nature earlier. He's serious, which is good. It's neutral. And I need a serious Pokemon at this point. <laughs> Not overly great stats right now. I mean, I fought a bunch of things that gave defense. So that's why he has high defense. I mean, I took him to the Magma Cavern because I had a bunch of Geodude and Graveler and Torkoal he could knock out. So yeah. That's his moveset for now. I might put strength on him soon. But yeah, he got Surf and Ice Beam and that's important. Then there's Kojiro, the sassy swallow. Kind of sad about the speed drop, but yeah. I also buffed his attack by raising him in Mount Pyre against a bunch of uh, shop at They give attack EVs. And yeah, he's got Aerial Life, which is just perfect for something named after Sasaki Kojiro. Also, I gave him Facade because he got Guts, so if he gets poisoned or especially burned, he gets a super powerful Facade, and that's just so good. Also, Steel Wing, because that's kind of a throwaway TM, but yeah. I mean, Marion was already kind of up there. He was level 38. She! There I go, not paying attention to genders again. <laughs> Then Stigma, the Vile Plume. Ooh, really good defense and special attack now. <laughs> so she should be pretty good. Kind of sad that I don't have Giga Drain for her, but yeah, 
This is a very sun dependent set between Solar Beam and Moonlight, but I think it should work, especially with Moonlight healing two thirds of her HP, which is already pretty high. And then Pork Trooper! Also raised his special attack because I took a little extra time to raise them against a bunch of Spinda, because those give special attack. And yeah, he's got Psychic now, along with Psybeam. So yeah, don't need to go over Crenon because he didn't really change at all. What I do need to do is finish up this episode by dealing with this. Team Magma's up to something, which I could have gone to the Space Center earlier to see their warning letter. I think it's still there, actually. And it's pretty great. But let's take a look. Ooh. Magma grunts everywhere, and yeah, it's still there. Heh. <laughs> An intent to steal notice. How are you? We are doing fine. We will soon visit you to take your rocket fuel. <laughs> well, they are upfront about that. Really self-righteous about it. Oh, so these guys do fight. I thought they were gonna, like, stay there to threaten the scientists or something, but... I guess we got a fight on our hands. Okay, you and your normal, perfect first victim for frostbite, at least on screen. Just wash you away. Take this page from the Book of Marimaru. Man, I miss my little ninja. But yeah, bit of experience and, oh, I should give you the amulet coin, like, right now. That should work. And one thing I like is, when the Magma Grunts see you, it just restarts the scene because it was already playing in this place. <laughs> I don't know, just a little thing. But, uh, yeah, this little lady, she has a Zubat. And I could Ice Beam it, but it's not worthy. Aurora Beam. Use a pretty attack, I guess. I mean, the background is pretty nice. Like an Aurora. Not much experience, but I'll take it. Then there was a Poochiena. Just wash it. No need to sink, just wash it away, because it's a Poochiena. Simple as that. Alright. Ran out of fuel. I think she meant that intentionally, because she's after rocket fuel. Okay. Yeah, they don't even need to bother hiding their intention, because they already declared it ahead of time with that intent to steal notice. <laughs> Got a ball toy. I could surf, but I feel like being different. And really, it's no difference in terms of what attack I'm gonna use, so Ice Beam! Freeze it! Or just kill it, that works too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Frostbite! You're like five levels away from your name actually making sense. Oh, even a chintzy cup of fuel. <laughs> You're getting beggarly. Okay, no one but no one, not even the grunts on the bottom floor. Okay, buddy. But yeah, this guy's just here to guard the stairs and be annoying, and he's got a mighty Anna to make him slightly more annoying. Okay. I mean, I'm mostly using special attacks, so whatever. Pretty sure this one shot's because I'm like 50% over your level, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good experience, though. Another mighty Anna. What, do you just intend to spam intimidate with these guys? Good thing I chose a special attacker, then. Just watch it away. Okay. And let me guess, Mighty Anna? Normal? That was unexpected, but, uh, Surf. <laughs> the double intimidate. Really glad I chose Frostbite for this. Okay, just acting at me all over the place. All right. And he just steps, steps me, steps aside and lets me go. Wow. But yeah, he's not the only guard. They go heavy duty on this. Yeah, I'll take you on. I mean, this is dangerous, but at least it's a bunch of single battles and not like a triple battle that only lasted two generations. That mechanic. Okay, so I thought this was going to be heavy duty, but then he just threw out one Zubat, and it died to an Aurora Beam. 
Let's see what the other guys have to say before I make any conclusions, so, because I don't remember them that well. Almost there, Frostbite. You lost, but... But what? You back away? Heh. <laughs> and yeah, they're just gonna take me on one-on-one -on -one with no breaks in between. Which is especially bad, or at least it would be, because I have that rule saying I can't use items from my bag mid-battle. But yeah, this guy just got the one Mighty Anna. At that level, though, I'd have to wonder if I can one-shot it. I mean, Frostbite, Frostbite is one of the weaker attackers, but he does have high base power moves, and there's the roar. Okay, Kojido, I guess you get to kill something with your quote-unquote signature move. <laughs> nice. Level 40 for Frostbite, that's nice. Only one special attack I think I saw. Oh my god. Again with the butts, leading into nothing. Okay, so are you gonna have one Pokemon and just kinda make this completely underwhelming? Let's see. Yep, there it is, and it's a ball toy. GG, buddy. And you know what? Ice Beam, because I feel like it. I'm feeling frosty. With frostbite. <laughs> Up there at the same level as Creenon now. <laughs> okay, so that's all of them stepping aside. And I guess I could talk to these guys later, because one of them has a Sunstone, I don't remember who. Ooh, Steven's here. And he's taking on Maxie and this guy. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, they're taking it back to Mount Chimney. And they're just gonna... They're just gonna blow up the volcano. That's what they're after? Just blowing up a volcano? Okay, <laughs> they're desperate now. Yeah, this is gonna be a double battle, and I think I can only pick a few Pokemon. Like three of them, if I remember right. So I'll leave with Frostbite. And there might be some fire types, so I don't want to bring Stigma. Creenon wouldn't be the best. Uh, Pork Trooper, you got sick fat, and Marion, because you're a heavy hitter? Sounds good. That scene, though. Okay, so he's got a Matang, Skarmory, and Aggron. I think we know what type this guy likes. <laughs> oh, it's not just a grunt, it's your admin. I definitely want to surf that camera up right away. Level 42 Mighty Anna, though? My god. Alright, let's go with Surf, because it doesn't hit my teammate. Not like I would really care that much if Matang goes down, but... Please be going after... Oh! I was hoping you'd go after Matang, so I could hit harder. And I wouldn't have to deal with the confusion. Light screen, that's nice. Come on, Frostbite. Dang it. Ooh. Oh, but it was just going for takedown? Okay. Again with the swagger. Oh, you were just gonna get both of us, of course. <laughs> you jerk. Alright, Matang. Metal Claw, but it missed with a 5% chance. Ugh. At least I got to wash away the camera, I think. I mean, there's that modifier, but that did it. Okay, good. <laughs> What's up next, Tabitha? You also got a Mighty Anna, so that basically completely counteracts the swagger on Frostbite. And doesn't do anything from a tank because of clear body OP. I think I'll just spread some damage around. Cause this guy's just gonna keep using swagger. Like, really? Kinda wish I went into this with a person, Barry. I didn't know I'd be dealing with so much swagger. Yeah, go after that grunty mighty Anna. That's actually what I wanted you to do when you rage your attack even further, but... I wanted you to do that because I want to turn this into a 2v1 fight against Maxi. Come on, Frostbite. Of course not. Uh... Kinda risky, but I'll surf anyway. Taunt, that's fine. I don't even have any status moves. 
Metal Claw. You're getting really powerful, Matang. You've barely taken any damage. Alright, what's next? What's potentially getting served in the face? Golbat. Okay. And I snap out. Nice. Let me guess, that's gonna mean another swagger coming my way. Wouldn't surprise me. I think I'll just ice beam that goal back, because again, I just want it to be a 2v1. Oh, but that went for Matang. Please double target Matang with your swagger. No, of course not. They're going all out on the confusion. Ugh. Alright, let's see if you hurt yourself. No, you're just going with a plus six by now metal claw. Oh, just murdered that goal bad. <laughs> nice. Come on, Frostbite. Thank you. Maybe I should have went for Body Slam with all this attack I have. But nope. It's a 2v1 now. What'd you say to that, Maxi? Well, he's saying camera upped. And there goes my light screen, so... You're probably gonna target Matang. Still, I want Surf. What do you even have? You have hitting yourself in, confu in confusion, if I can even talk. Blah, 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 blah. Ugh, this is annoying. Well, that's annoying, too. Amnesia. I mean, we'll have to see if it even matters, but... I, I'm feeling dangerous. Reflect? Well, if this thing's gonna go for Earthquake, that'll be pretty good, but I don't know if it even has Earthquake. We'll see if it matters. Whoa, that Amnesia saved it, and yeah, there's the Earthquake. Oh my god! Matang, you saved me! Whoa, I was gonna have to go for another Water type if Frostbite fell, so I'm definitely switching you out. Get him, Pork Trooper! I think he's got a Crobat after this, so it's a good thing I'm going for Pork Trooper now. Well, there goes Matang. You did good. I wasn't expecting you to do much, but you did legitimately good. And there was an Earthquake with Garmory Resist, but yeah. Oh, God. Thank goodness for that Reflect. Okay, just... I should just go for Psychic, because this Garmory might outspeed me. Is that even going to kill the camera up, though? Did it? Nice. I was wondering, because if Resisted and Skarmory's not exactly an offensive powerhouse, but yeah. There's a Crobat, and it's getting blasted right in the face with a Stab Psychic. Let's see if it takes it. Just barely. Shockwave. Air cutter, don't care. Don't care cutter. That was awful. And Skarmory takes the kill. Okay. <laughs> that could have went so much worse because it was a double battle and I've just recently been scarred by a very bad double battle. Whoa, 10,000 polka dollars. That amulet coin. <laughs> oh man. Whoa. Well, they're getting a little contemplative, aren't they? Huh. Alright. Start blaming Team Aqua then. Okay. So, yeah, I need to go and see Steven. Which I think I'll do that at the last thing for this episode, which has already gone on for quite some time in the two parts that I've had to record for it. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm wondering why I wasn't going for the running shoes as soon as I stepped out of the building. So which one is his house again? I want to say it's this one. As I derp right into the side. There we go. There's Steven. Yes, yeah, kind of sparsely decorated, but hey. You helped me out against a dangerous foe, and then you gave me an HM that I need to move on. The HM for dive. Which I said I was going to teach Strength to uh, Frostbite, but I think Dive might actually be the move I do it instead. In fact, I think it's going to be, because i got nothing else on my team that can even use it. But yeah, that'll be, a th that'll be a decision for another time. I'll see you in the next episode of Shark King's Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke. 
See you then, peeps.